Folks at home, folks at home. Yes. Y'all got me? Hey. One, two. One, two. I see the grimace on his eyebrows. It's never a good sign. How about you, Cliff? How you doing this morning? I feel like Ed Ogeron at SEC Media Day. Who do you feel like? It's a Southern thing. You wouldn't get it. SEC Media Day. Football? Yeah, yeah. I feel like Ed Ogeron. Ed Ogeron is a coach. Head coach at LSU. Ah. One, two, one, two. There you go. Uh, folks at home, folks at home, how you doing this morning? Day two, 2017 ICAST show. We're so excited to be here broadcasting live with Bash University. Pete Glusek, how you doing this morning? Good to see you. Good to see you. Doing great. We had a great day yesterday. Yes. We talked to everybody. Everybody. Yeah, and, and I'm so excited today because uh, we got a lot of the winners uh, yes. in the ICAST show that we're going to be talking to today. We do have a lot of winners, and we have a winner sitting between us yes, right now, do. the one and only Cliff Crochet Cajun, baby. How you doing this morning? Good, Good to morning. see you, Cliff. Good morning. Good to see you. What are your, let everybody know right off the bat, what are your uh, thoughts on day one of ICAST? How was the, the day one show for you? Chaos. Chaos. Uh, chaos. <laughs> it's, uh, it was good. I got to make my rounds, tell my current sponsors. Uh, the cool thing that I like about it is you get to see everybody. The people that, that uh, other fishermen that you don't yeah. talk to or, or get to hang out with yep. during the week. People that work for, not for, other companies, not your sponsors. It, uh, I described it yesterday as almost like a reunion. Yeah. And uh, controlled chaos. Controlled chaos. There you have it. And listen, I know we mentioned this all day yesterday, but I want to remind everybody watching live on uh, Facebook and also on uh, Bash University, uh, this is a once-in-a-lifetime thing that's happening right here, Pete Glusick. Never before has anyone broadcast live the entire show from ICAST, and we're doing it this week with Bash University. It's a pretty special thing that's going on. It, it, it is. It, it's, it's an amazing thing, and we've got to thank the Keep America Fishing people uh, and the Pitch It campaign for, yes. for, for, for allowing us to be here and be live. And uh, we want to invite everybody to take the pledge to pitch it, keep those soft plastics out of the Absolutely. water. Absolutely. Keep them out. Make, make a trash can, make a recycling bin. And uh, and yeah, it's it's uh, here we here we are live with uh, with the best of the best. We had we had some of the top elite pros. We've got like I said, we got elite pro here, Cajun baby, a, a recent winner, and uh, and we and we've got industry people coming through all day today, and that's going to be right here. And if you guys are watching this uh, on Facebook or have not yet tried Bash U TV, Mike has generously agreed to give you guys thirty days free. <laughs> Did you know you agreed to that? I agree. I agreed to it. <laughs> and I, if you use the promo code TRYBU30, T-R-Y-B-U-30, right? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I always get these things wrong? Isn't that it's what so, you said it's, yesterday? It's so much fun when you. Oh. I just have to let you do it. But the, it, God, it's just pulled B, on the screen. It's B U T V thirty. B U T V thirty. Right. Is that's <laughs> what I said. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's discount code. So you guys try it. Come on over. You try it for thirty days free on Mike. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you know, we've worked real hard, and, and Cliff is one of our great instructors at yes. BashU yes. TV, and, and he's one of many. And we have almost 300 instructional seminars on Bash University in our wow. library right now. That's and, amazing. And it's growing by two every single week. Wow. 
And uh, we have Scott Suggs just recently released with his uh, uh, Fishing for Suspended Fish. Um, and next week yes. on Bass University is Seth Fighter's Ooh. Giant River Smallmouth technique. So you guys might want to take a view of that. Does that involve that. his beautiful mustache <laughs> or his <laughs> mullet <laughs> or his mullet? <laughs> I think he cuts them off and ties them to his jig. It's a hair jig. It's technique. a hair jig. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's awesome. And uh, this is awesome for you guys because you're getting a sneak peek into a show that has been private forever and ever. This is a business to business show. Uh, regular dudes like you guys watching, regular fish heads, normal guys don't have access to it. We're giving you access to all the latest, greatest new baits, lures, rods, reels, boat and accessories. And Cajun Baby, you've got some of that stuff for us right now. I notice you've got some goodies. Get, 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 give it up. Show us a couple of these things. ICAST is all about new baits. Show well, us a couple of these things. Here's what I got. I've been waiting on this one for about four years. This is a, it's called the Cajun Week from Lucky Strike. Randy Carpenter. Show it right there. Show it to this one right here. This one right here. Look at this beautiful thing. Look at this beautiful thing. That is the Cajun Week. Look at that thing. Uh, by Lucky Strike. It'll be out sometime in the fall. And I've been waiting on that one for about uh, four or five years. And it's a bait. It's a, it's a bait that... Uh, I've, I've fished something similar to this for the last couple of years. Yes. And, and I've caught some big ones. I've caught several sevens and eights. Uh, Toledo Ben Rayburn. Uh, I've caught them up on the Delaware River with it. All around the country, it's a, uh, it's a good bait. Real good. It, it's, it's the wake bait that I've seen move the most water. Right. More than any other one. And uh, it's a cool deal because it's not just a clear water yeah. bait. You know, it's a, yep. it's, a, it's a dirty water bait too. So this one will be out. I'm, I'm pumped about this one. You could have given me a few before the Delaware River Tournament last Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I just got my hands on it <laughs> this week. Wow. <laughs> now, th that, I was going to say real, real quick, Pete, that is a technique that, in my opinion, is one of the least talked about techniques. I know we had a big thing on it on Bash University mm -hmm. talking about wake baits. Right. But, dude, guys just generally ignore wake bait fishing, right? Square billing. Rattle trapping, a lot, yep. lot of exposure on that. But when you start talking wake bait, people don't know about Why is that? I, but here's my question, I, and I'm guilty of neglecting this category. Yes. W when, when do I throw a wake bait? All the time. If, if the water is uh, 50 or above, I, I throw it. Uh, you know, it, the name is Cajun Wake. Uh, you know, so it does wake. You can wake it on the top of the water. And it will catch some fish. But my favorite way to fish it is probably about four inches below the water. And you can control that with rod tip. And I get that rascal about, you know, four to six inches underwater. And just watch it bulge and, and push water. Mm. And that is, that, for me, that's the best thing I've found. I throw it. And it, the, the question I get a lot of times is how muddy is too muddy? Or right. how clear does it need to be? Yeah. If I can see it or barely see it, it's good. Gotcha. Because it's pushing so much water. But this one, this one is, um, I've made a lot of money, made classics on, on this bait. Uh, it's a good one. I'm, I'm glad I, to finally get it out. I like it. I like it a lot. And the one thing I noticed, uh, I, I got to play with this thing a little bit before we came on air, is the sound. Okay? The sound of that's pretty key. Uh, you know, a lot of wake baits that we're throwing are, are, are quiet, right? Mm -hmm. They're no rattle or slight rattle, but that's got a knocker. Tell me, tell everybody a little bit about that. It's just got one big knock in there. I don't, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it's just one big knock. If you go back on Bassmaster.com, and, and I've caught some fish on on, uh, on this bait a couple years back, and as I'm flipping the fish in the boat, you can hear that, that bait knock. You hear that knock, yeah. And the, and, uh, the video guys at Bassmaster.com said, Cliff, that, you know, I don't know if you want to put this out during a tournament. And I said, man, go ahead, do it, but it, uh, that sound, and, and the thing I like about this bait is you can reel it real fast, and it won't blow out. Right. And that thing's knocking and moving real fast. Yep. It's, it's, all, it's awesome. Wow. It's that's, addictive. That's key. Let me remind everybody watching live right now that we want your input. If you've got questions or comments during the day, please let us know. Hit us up on our IM board or hit us up on our Facebook page. But I'm, I've got another question, and I know there's a lot of people watching right now, and you mentioned rod tip. 
as far as how to control that bait. But what is the right rod, reel, and line to fish this bait or to fish wake baits? My favorite is a, is a uh, seven foot falcon. It's a composite rod. Composite. Composite yep. rod. I throw it on a twenty pound mono, and I throw it on a seven and one reel. Uh, on the rod. On a composite rod, the composite rod is real good for, for launching it. Grass beds, rip wrap, that type of stuff. But if I'm if I'm point casting to docks or trees or certain pieces of cover, I like to go with the graphite. Graphite because it casts a little better. Right. But generally, uh composite rod. I go with the mono because you're moving that bait so fast, you know, when you when you hit that bite. The rod taking some. You want to give as much as you can right. because the bait is moving so fast. So the yep. rod gives some, the mono gives some, and with mono, I'm trying to I'm trying to keep it up. Trying to keep it up, right? I'm trying to keep it yep. up. Uh, so I stay away from fluorocarbon with that. Read uh, on a reel. I throw seven three to one. At seven three to one is what I use for all techniques. It gives me, you know, I can perf perform it's moderately it's fast. It's reel. a hot rod. Yep. I can I can roll it fast, yep. but I still have enough power. Right, uh, and that that set up for me with the the mono, the uh, composite rod, and the seven three to one, and I've tried a bunch of things over yeah. the last several years. That's the best setup I have found for a weak bait. Now, it, this looks like a shallow water bait. I mean, are you are, are you able to get them to come up out of deep water on this tool? If if there's some type of uh, grass, if there's okay. some type of cover, it, it mostly grass, uh, they'll come up out of it. Uh, you know, if I, on a flat type deal. If I'm in 10 foot of water and I got grass up to 4 foot, yeah, I've caught them on it. Uh, I've never caught them offshore on, on humps or anything like that. Uh, generally, a shallow water bait mm -hmm. over grass is key. It's, it's uh, and, and a real good deal. In my experience with the the bigger wake baits, because they make, I mean, there's different varieties, and this is a larger size, is you get you can really trigger those big ones. Yeah, we we fishing for big ones with with this yeah, bait here. Big big fish bait, right. big fish. Yeah, it will, it will catch small ones, but uh, especially in tournament fishing, I'm looking for big ones. The biggest I've ever caught on it is a uh, eight pounder. Okay, I caught I caught eight pound on Toledo Bend with it, and nice. I, it was a cool bait. It was an awesome bait because luckily I had a GoPro on my boom, and uh, so that video went on Bassmaster.com. But I'm fishing it, and I was fishing it kind of up in the water, and you can see the fish come up and bite it. Oh. Ooh. And you see the rod load up, and I fight them, and I get them to the boat. And Ooh. and even to <laughs> even to now, Ooh. people come up and say, "Man, that frog bite on Toledo Bend with that big one." That was a that was yeah. an awesome frog bite. <laughs> and it wasn't a frog bite; it was it was a wake was bait. bait. People bait. thought it was a frog bite. It, it was, was a wake bait bite. You can see the fish come up and blow up on it. That that's incredible. Now, are you able to trigger strikes like on on the the sunny days, the calm days, or is this like I, I, I seems to me a wind and an overcast is, is a good condition for this tool. Wind and overcast is, is always good for any fishing. Yeah. But with this bait, high suns, calm, calm conditions, yep. I like it. I like the speed of it. I like the noise. Mm -hmm. uh, and also cover, you know, heavy cover. Now, I cannot rascal around docks. Uh, Chickamauga a couple years ago caught them cranking docks on it. Uh, over grass. It, it's, uh, over grass is probably the best scenario for it mm -hmm. but if you if you think of it as like old spinner bait and put that rascal where where it don't belong it'll catch them the, the dog bite on chickamauga was was pretty fun it's phenomenal it's phenomenal the cajun wake i love it uh wake bait around docks is very not typical uh it's a great tip here today i actually learned something i don't throw that wake bait around docks <laughs> real quick i'm about to ball out of here but before i do that i'm gonna let these guys continue the conversation uh, definitely want to give a shout out to our producer today. You know him, BTC. What's up, Brian the Carpenter? Pushing buttons again, Brian. You have a video monitor on you today, so we can see your face. No, still no video monitor, or Brian the Carpenter. <laughs> no. Uh, shout out to Brian the Carpenter. Uh, also, Justin's back there setting everything up. Thank you guys. Uh, I'm going to see both of you guys later. Thank have you, a good man. show. Keep giving the secrets away, Cliff. We need them. <laughs> we yeah. need the secrets. And we'll see you back later on uh, today. I'll be uh, back. We'll see Mike back doing some uh, doing some interviews a little bit later on today. We're going to get s squared up here on the table and um, talk a little bit more about wake baits. Uh, just an amazing big fish weapon. It's one that uh, a lot of guys are, are missing uh, in their arsenal. I'm certainly guilty of it. Um, 
And uh, but I have had some of my best fishing days on on wake baits, and I'm really excited about the Cajun wake. We'll look forward to getting that out on the water. But you got something else here on the table as well. I do, Cliff. What, this this looks new and innovative. What do we got? This is a uh, this is generally generally new. Okay. It this is a uh, this is a stutter step. A stutter step. Stutter step from Bill Lewis Outdoors, the makers of Rattle Trap. Mm -hmm. This is a stutter step 4.0. Last year, we came out with a stutter step 5.0, which was a, a pretty big top water bait, mm -hmm. and that that worked out real well. But as soon as as soon as the uh, 5.0 came out, I said, "Man, we need a small one." So they scaled everything down and came out with the 4.0, which has all the same. Uh, personalities of the 5.0 it's just offered in a small beat okay let's have a look this is a it's a walk the dog style bait this is a walk the dog uh stutter step okay and it has another cool retrieve that we call wag the tail you throw it out you put your rod about 10 o'clock and you get a steady crank and it'll zit it'll snake back to the bull okay the cool thing about this bait is the uh it's the pivot point on the beat mm -hmm. the only thing that's in the water you know, this is where it pivots. So when that rascal, when you twitch it, that bait will almost turn on its side, and that right. tail comes around, sprays a bunch of water back and forth, and it walks. And it, and walk is a general term, you know, yep. but it'll walk in place and not walk towards you on one retrieve. Or you can get aggressive with it and, and uh, wag the tail back to you mm -hmm. or, or have a traditional walking retrieve. But... This is um, it's a couple baits in one, a couple different retrieves, and it is different. It different. It acts different. It's a cool deal. These are not small fish strategies that we're talking about here. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I I noticed that with you uh, this year, uh, you know, in watching you fish, you've done, uh, you've had some amazing days where you've stormed out in the lead in tournaments and 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 really crush those big ones is this the is that your strategy it's like high risk high reward type fishing is that how you go about your business out there yeah it's uh it, it's a tough deal because on the back side of that there's, there's some down but yeah i like to uh i like to push it. i like to be aggressive mm -hmm. uh big fish bait big fish patterns and when it works it's good you know i Ricky Bobby said, "If you ain't first, you last," and that's kind of <laughs> that's, the, that's the truth. But I, shake I just you shaking bank. Uh, I like it, man. When it, when it works out, it, it's good. Well, it's uh, you know, I, was it the classic that you were leading? No, I, I uh, well, I will go through my whole. I had a good six month run there. Okay, I won a open in Morgan yep. City. Mm -hmm. That was uh, that was fun. Chaffalai, Chaffalai Basin, home water, mm -hmm. first bass win. Then we go to Cherokee to start the season. I lead day one on that. Fishing aggressive, getting after it, pushing right. it. Good uh, horrible weather, which is good weather for right. fishing. But you, you, while well, those guys that wound up winning were the deep water uh, spotted bass guys, right? It was deep smallmouth fishing. I was smallmouth, right? Okay. I was up cranking mud. Cranking mud. Uh, didn't know when to turn aggressiveness down. When the, once the front blew through, high skies. Right. Wouldn't put it down. And then on to the classic, I was third after day one of the classic, throwing a frog up shallow, uh, power fishing. Third place after day one. Didn't know when to turn it down, <laughs> and uh, ended up finishing uh, 19th of the classic. But so that was excellent to 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 be in that position at the world championship, be that far out in front is uh, that had to be an amazing feeling going into day two. It, it was. It's uh. It's crazy. It's happening to me right now, just thinking about it. Yeah. But when I get in those situations, you look back. I mean, I relive my whole life from when I got my first good rod and reel through the club days, through the federation days, to the open days, to this. And I, I watch this whole thing in about three seconds, and it, it's cool. <laughs> well, well, you're having a great career, and we, we certainly appreciate the work you do at Bass University. And uh, I know – we got the we got the home stretch here of the elites, 
And we're going to be doing some, well, you got some largemouth, some shallow water largemouth fishing to be doing. Maybe some shallow water smallmouth fishing. But uh, how, how are you liking your uh, your prospects here going through the rest of the season? I like it. It's, uh, it's going to be tough. It, the good thing I like about the, the last part of the season is we've got St. Lawrence, uh, Champlain, mm-hmm. and then St. Clair, which are all smallmouth fisheries. Uh, so I, I like having a chance to go in there to go against the grain, catch green fish, should be less pressure. And those, those fish up in that part of the country, when you get around them, if you get around them, the right ones, they bite. Right. So I, I, like, uh, I like going against the grain. Now, I may get beat for it, and I may not make the classic because of it, but I like. Well, the, a couple guys made the top 10, top 12 cut fishing largemouth yeah. up on Thousand Islands the last time you guys were there. That place is loaded. It, it, the deal that I've seen is you got to get in the, right, in the right area, which is fishing mm-hmm. in general. But uh, St. Lawrence, you, you go down the back of stretch and you catch them, mm-hmm. a lot of, you know, pound and a half, two, two and a half. And that's fine. That's great fun fishing, but you got to find the, the threes, fours, and four and a halves, you know. Absolutely. Well, they have 25-pound bags have been caught largemouth up at Thousand Islands, so hopefully you'll be one of those guys that, that do that. But um, but I, I wanted to step back and talk because we're at the industry show. We're here at ICAST, and obviously you're, you're an elite angler, right? You're working with sponsorships. And something unique is, I, just occurred to me, uh, that you don't see that often with pros is you have two crankbait companies that you're talking about now. Ty- now, typically for those of you watching that aren't you know in the sponsorship game, you, typically when you sign a contract with a, a crankbait style company, you're it's an exclusive deal where you're not permitted to to work into it you know with another company. And you, you've got Lucky Strike and Rattle Trap here. How'd you work that out? I got, I got pretty lucky on that deal because they're both old. The thing I like about them, they're both old school, original companies that's, from way back when. That's true. So the, the way it happened was I signed, on with, uh, I signed on with Rattle Trap. And at the time, Rattle Trap was uh, just Rattle Trap. That was the only bait they had. Right. So I signed on with Rattle Trap to promote Rattle Trap, and, uh, which is cool because I've been fishing them since – Ever. Everybody has. Everybody has. Yeah. So uh, that was good. And then in 2013, I, I aligned with, with, with Lucky Strike. And we had the conversation that I was already with Rattle Trap. And they were fine with that because Lucky Strike does crankbaits, jerkbaits, spinnerbaits, plastics, but not a lipless. And even further down the road, when Rattle Trap came out with a, a, a square bill that Echo. 1.75. Right. Uh, we worked it out where at Rattle Trap, I'll, I'll promote Rattle Trap and Sutter Steps and Top Waters. Okay. And then I'll, I'll handle uh, jerk baits and crank baits and plastics at Lucky Strike. So it, 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 it's cool that they let me do that. That is very, you know, understanding. And, and I think you pulled some smooth Cajun <laughs> magic on them to get that worked out. Yeah. Uh, and the good thing about it is they. They don't really have any products that compete, even though they're kind of in the same category. category. Right. But they feed off each other, too, and they work together. And, and uh, they're real respectful to let me do that. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I appreciate them because, uh, like you said, it, it don't happen often. So No, it doesn't happen often. And, often, and it's great to see that, that they're understanding and, and uh, you're able to promote both products. And you do a great job of it. I mean, you certainly do it with us at, at Bass University. And, um, and I appreciate all the work that you've done for us. And we're going to see, we want to get that muddy water seminar. We've been talking to Cliff about doing a, a muddy water basics seminar for Bash University TV, and hopefully we can bring that to everybody next year. That would be, uh, that would be a good one. <laughs> well, we, I, want to, uh, I want to thank you for being here with us. I want to wish you the best of luck on the rest of the elites. We want to see you back in the 2018 Classic. And, um, and you know, best of luck on the elites out there this year. Carpenter, what's coming up next? Uh, we have Gene Jensen here to talk about 13 fishing. And Cliff, do you want to stay and hang out? What time oh. do you have till? Yeah, we got. Uh, we'll go a little bit. Let's bring him in. All right, let's put Gene in the middle seat. Come on, Gene.
How's everybody doing? Let me get my microphone so you can hear. Welcome me. in. Hey, let me tell you, we're talking about iCast, and the good thing about iCast, and you get to uh, meet people and, 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 and hang out. Yesterday, that was at, uh, we was in a booth, Cigar, Cigar booth, mm -hmm. and the conversation always comes up with me is the uh, tournament at Clarks Hill, 2010, that, that uh, Jay will won. But that's, that's the cool thing about iCast, you get to hang out, mm -hmm. talk, talk to uh, and the fans, friends. Just about cool things that, that happened or they saw us. Yeah, and I got to hang out with him after the tournament at my dentist's house where you were mm -hmm. staying. Yeah, I remember how squirrely you were and you were, you know, afraid Heart of this, afraid of that. Heartbroken. Heartbroken. I didn't hang out with you after you after the end of it, but it was the <laughs> second day. You were on those, you were on some good fish way back in the creek and they were all local fish and I learned a lot just talking to you about frog fishing that day. That was uh you know. that was a good that was a good weekend. That's a good tournament. They actually good got tournament. your name on the, uh, you know, people, yeah. fi people figured out. I yeah, know you lost it, you know. Yeah, that was my, but that was my coming out party. That's right. That's right. So there are always good things come out of that. So, we better well, get a 13 fishing because if well, not, we'll start talking <laughs> frog fishing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and hey, we that's done. all right. Well, Gene, I'd like to welcome yeah, you to Bass University TV Live. We appreciate you being here yeah, with no us. No problem. That's one awesome. Of the, one of the great instructors in, in bass fishing. And, um, and you're here uh, talking about uh, 13. Yep. From what I understand, they they had some wins in some categories. Yes, uh, we did. Yes, we did. Hey, we had a we had two wins. We had okay. one for and I forgot to bring it, but it's the 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 kids combo. Okay. A little blue and black rod that right. uh, actually my kids had one similar to it a few years ago, and it's a it's a graphite rod for mm -hmm. kids. It's a great one. And then the 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 glow stick or the the Gen Two Fate Blacks as they call them. These are. Uh, these are what won best of show for for fishing rods. They're not best of show, but uh, one for fishing rods, and uh, they're a really good blank. I, me personally, I'm not a bright rod guy, but uh, it's going to be a love hate relationship. There are going to be guys <laughs> that really really love the yeah. color, and there's be guys that really really hate the color. But it's um, it's it's just, out there. It's I mean, out there. Dude. It, it, you see it from a mile away. You can see it from across <laughs> the lake, <laughs> which is a good and bad thing. But they're. Yeah. Hundred dollar price point ninety nine ninety nine. Okay. Um, they're very well balanced. I love their spinning reel, uh, the the handle on spinning reel because when you're drop shotting, I always find myself sliding my hand up to the balance point on a rod mm -hmm. and getting it up on the blank. Well, they move the the uh, the handle up and made it comfortable to where you can put your, your balance point when you have a reel on it is right here and you can put your finger on the rod and feel everything. And they're sensitive and a hundred dollars you really can't beat the quality of the blank. So right. Guides are good. Everything is good on it. They make good rods, and uh, but it's bright. Fate black. Yep, that's yeah. awesome. It is a glow stick. So Man, it is definitely a glow stick. I have uh, Popticals just came out with uh, a new pair of glasses that will match these rods perfectly. <laughs> 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 I, oh, man. I think I may have to get into some 13s just so I can look cool. Yep, and this wasn't a winner, but this is something new for 13 is they're doing some really good spinning reels. Last year they introduced three. Now they're introducing like 15. And I want Cajun Baby just to hold that, spool, that reel and tell me how much you think it is. Give me a price point. That's, uh, that's 170. 29.99. Twenty nine ninety nine. Twenty nine ninety nine. And it's a metal reel. It's not plastic. Now I'm gonna tell you I'm not a spinning reel guy. Uh huh, I know. That's but, why I gave it to you. But <laughs> <laughs> But I can tell a drunk reel when I feel one. Yeah, and, and you know and that feels good. It's a good reel for the price point. That's what 13's known for. I, when I picked it up, I thought seventy five dollars is what what my price point was, and I love spinning reels. And uh and they're good for having a good quality reel at a low price. And it's a, you know, it, it, I love the company. I love working with them. So, Cliff, Cliff that's a perfect reel for you, man. Yeah. For, for $29, you yeah, can you buy can, it and just throw it out. I can use it, it. I can use it three <laughs> days a year. Yeah. <laughs> Check it. It'll last you 20 years, man. <laughs> <laughs> it, this, is why, this is how you get laughed at in the spinning reel world. Yeah, you got to spin it around on the other side. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's that beast in your hand right there? This, this is the one that everybody's talking about. Okay. Okay. This reel is the Concept Z from 13 Fishing, of course, but it has zero bearings, okay? Look I, at that reel right there. I've heard about this reel. It's orange. I'm sorry. and I, I'm a red, red and black guy, Georgia Bulldogs, go dogs. Um, but it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure that's orange? It's orange. It's burnt orange. All right. And so what it, what it is, they don't have any bearings in it, zero ball bearings. How'd they accomplish that? 
instead of using steel bearings or 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 uh, any kind of a bearing, they're using a polymer disc. And I'm gonna pull it out and show it and hook, put it up to the camera. But it's a it's a polymer disc, high grade polymer. This is something the real okay. designer has had in his mind for 20 years hmm. and had to wait all this time for technology to catch up with his idea because they never made a polymer that could hand up, stand up to the tolerances that and, and the and the beat down that a reel puts to it. So I'm gonna hold it real close, let you guys look at it. Let me see. It's that's all it is. Is just a green disc, solid polymer, no bearings. So what this does, I'll let you look at it, Cliff. What it what it does is it um, re it, it reduces friction. I got hung my cord, but it's no corrosion. You don't, and eighty percent of all the problems with a reel is the corrosion in right. the bearings. Mm -hmm. You know, because the the reel guy worked twenty years at a a warranty deal, real warranty shop, mm -hmm. and eighty percent of his problems were were bearing problems, and so he's he's eliminated that with the uh, with the polymer bearings. And each reel has seven of them. And when these are introduced or when these come out on the market in February, they're also going to come out with kits to replace for all your other 13 reels. You can replace all the bearings with these polymer, well, polymer bearings. Are, are so, they, so they, they're, they're bearings. They're by just, definition, they're bearings. Okay. Because, because that's. They're just what, not steel. Not steel. And there's no they're balls in graphite. it. Yeah, okay. It's one solid. Now, I, the thing, the questions I asked him was, how are the heat tolerances? He says, you would have to hold a blowtorch up to them to melt them. How many right. of us do that to our reels? All right. You know? And and so and then what about oiling and greasing? He said you just want to oil and grease oil and grease the, the original moving parts. Wow. But for the most part, these are totally free of needing to worry about flushing them or the things we do when we every year when we, man, when we maintain our reels. And so and plus it's lightweight. It's six point one ounces, um, and it's going to retail for two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. Now, how how is uh, the free spool? Uh, is it achieved? Well, I, I'm sure. I'm sure it's achieved well with uh, with these ball bearings. Yes. But, uh, oh, yeah. Have you had these out on the water yet? I haven't. Um, talking to the guys that have, I get to cast it for the first time this afternoon. We didn't uh, okay. dare bring the casting ones with the line on it in the, in the show because we'd be killing people uh, 100 <laughs> yards away. But uh, the from what everybody's saying is when you cast, you know, you get it, somebody say, hands you a reel and said, oh, man, this is a better reel than this one and so on and so forth. And it's right. really hard to tell the difference. Yeah. It's obvious with right. this reel the casting distance is one third longer hmm. you know depending on what you're casting one third further because of the lack of friction well that's, that's an so. impress that's an bold and impressive statement I look, yeah i look forward to seeing them in action and, and i'm a skeptic so I'm, yeah. I'm saying from what people have told me but yeah. you know i'm going to get out this afternoon and mess around with it and really and really see what it's all about and then I'm interested in seeing the longevity of it and see right. what that does. So. Well, it seems like it seems like the company 13 has really uh, this year, or you know, has really focused on that beginner. Yes. You know that starter fisherman. Yep. Uh, got to start somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We got to keep teaching people right. how, to, how to do these this stuff, and you got a lot of new guys that are coming in wanting to learn. And are we going to be able to give them a good quality product that's not going to frustrate them out on the water? Right. You know, right. that's the biggest thing. You get them a cheap, you, mom and daddy buy them a, a Barbie pole, and they get frustrated because it messes up after the third cast. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's kind of what 13 is focusing on. Well, it's, I think it's great. I, I mean, the, uh, we got new people coming into sport all the time. We get them coming in through Bash University. And um, we talked about this a, a, a lot, but um, I got introduced to through my dad he yep. took me fishing when i was four years old and you see a lot of kids now that are coming into fishing watching you on youtube yep and watching other youtube channels and they're getting exposed to fishing that way yep. and they don't uh they don't know how to get in you know to the sport and they don't have the finances it's great that that 13 is making it you know affordable for these guys and uh They've got honestly, a, it's a really cool brand. Yeah. It's got a really cool stigma about it yep. that I think is appealing to the new kids. Very, very noticeable, and it's yeah. And they, and the other thing they introduced this year is a bunch of combos, which they mm -hmm. haven't had in the past. So you've got combos in all price ranges, yep. you know, and and reels that are only exclusive to those combos. Wow. So, yeah, they got some cool stuff. Well, that, that's excellent. Well, you have you been around the show? A little bit. I went about. I, I I usually divide it into thirds and cover one third one day, one third the next yeah. day, and then rush through the last day. But yeah, it's there's a lot of really neat things. Any, anything stand out? Uh, the new little GPS 
uh, the little system. I haven't looked at it, but somebody told me about the one from PowerPole this, uh, yesterday. That one's pretty cool. Um, what, is, what is that? It's like it manages your electrical uh, currents throughout your boat. So okay. from what I understand, if you got one battery going low, it'll switch your units over to another battery, and it'll just, you know, you will always have power. It'll switch your boat, uh, your, oh, wow. your alternator over to charge your, your other batteries. It's yeah, like a hopped-up purple switch. Yeah, exactly. So it's just a – Yeah. So it's Speaking of cool. new stuff. Got to self-promote. Try oh, this yeah. one out. <laughs> this is the new Cajun Week from Lucky Strike. <laughs> Check it out. Look at the bill on it. Yeah. Got a big wide wobble. Yep. Yeah. That's big. That's big power. That's 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 a uh, Cajun. What is it? Cajun Wake. The Cajun Wake. Cajun the ca wake. Cajun so it's wake. a wake bait. Well, we're that's we're gonna cool. we're gonna be having guys all day long with uh, with new products coming in. We've got uh, we've got some of the winners that are going to be coming in here throughout the day. Um, and we're real excited about it. We're, yeah, we're, it's awesome to be broadcasting here live from iCast. But, uh, but hey, what, what's happening with you? What's what, what's um, going on in your world right I'm now? Doing, I'm doing a little more traveling than I want to do, but it's a lot of fun. Okay. You know, this next week I'll be up in Wisconsin fishing uh, against some other YouTubers. So it's going to be a little fun little deal. We're going to be making some videos together. and then. Um, but for the most part, I'm I'm just making instructional videos as many as I can, yeah. and uh, and putting them out on my channel. And just still, my goal always is uh, teaching the world to fish. You know, I just I, I sit there and I watch you guys, and I learn a lot from you guys fishing. I watch the Cajun baby out there throwing in frogs, and and uh, and we just you know I I learn from them, and I just want everybody else that doesn't have that opportunity that we had with grandpas and dads and stuff and like that taking us fishing to get out there and go fishing man that's great so. yeah i really appreciate what you do and we certainly try to do that here at bass university yeah and, and teaching these guys how to fish but you, you do a lot of your fishing out of a kayak yep i do fit about 50 percent out of a kayak with jackson kayaks i've got a I, my favorite one is the new mayfly i've also got a big rig but that mayfly is great but yeah you can slide into any little pond and any little lake and go fishing we're gonna know. be talking to the jackson kayak folks here yep. at some point today yeah good but, people uh, on a kayak, I got a kayak question. Uh -huh. do, do you think, you know, we fish out of big boats, bass right. boats, and do you think kayakers catch more fish because they're in a smaller boat? I mean, obviously, we're going to catch more fish at times because we can go right. further, go, go further, faster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if, in a certain area. Okay, so I'll tell you an, an experience of mine. I'm sitting there fishing a spot. I'm on a mega school on Kentucky Lake. And I'm catching fish and catching fish. And a, and a, and a bass boat comes by with a trolling motor. I stop catching fish. And he leaves 20 minutes later, I start catching fish again. You know? Interesting. So, and, and all it is was the trolling motor. Right. And so another thing is I was in a, in a, in a small uh, river in middle Tennessee. I went over an a, a 18-inch smallmouth, saw him four feet under my boat. He never checked. He I went past, I grabbed a spinning rod, I threw it over my shoulder, and I caught that fish. Well, there, you, there's certainly that situation, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. They're just quieter, and you're, you don't make any noise. You're, well, you're you more stealth. You right. see some. You see a lot of guys on rivers, uh, you know, way back in flats, mm -hmm. where you want to go, but you maybe your boat's dragging or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I wish I had a, a kayak <laughs> or a P rod. Well, yeah, a P rod to, well, to pre fish you, yeah. man. You know, wouldn't it be cool? <laughs> you maybe you just tow one behind your uh, <laughs> your bass boat. You know, yeah, you'd mother, have the mother ship it. The mothership. <laughs> I don't think trip would let it. I don't <laughs> think trip would let it happen. Start pitching it, man. I mean, uh, kayak fishing's exploding yeah. all over the and sport a, of fishing. And the crazy thing is, is there's still a lot of people out there that don't don't know that they're really stable. It's yeah. hard to fall out of a fishing kayak. Talk to me about Jackson kayak. Okay. What, what What do you What you talked about the model you prefer? Mm -hmm. the Mayfly. The yep. Mayfly is what yep. you prefer. Why, why do you like that model? Okay, so the Mayfly was designed for fly fishing. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing on the front deck to get snagged or anything else the way they design it because your fly line does get snagged. But it's also created a nice open front deck so I can lay rods down and organize my stuff under my legs. It's a, You've got to be very, very space conscious about how you store stuff. It rides low to the water, so it doesn't catch a lot of wind. A lot of these kayaks have high gunnels, and right. it catches the wind. And that's the frustrating thing about kayak fishing. It's a little bitty boat. That wind starts blowing, and you have you find yourself casting like this and that because the wind's all messed up. Mm -hmm. So it's low to the water, doesn't catch wind. It tracks good, and it's fast for a big boat. And it's really wide, so you're stable. I can stand up in it. I can fish out of it standing. So if my legs get my butt gets tired, I can get stand up till my legs get tired. You can move around. Um, and it's just quiet. And I like pedal boats or paddle boats. I don't. I'm not okay. a true fan of pedal boats because I've got a bad hip thanks to the army. Um, and so being able to paddle mm -hmm. and and fish out of that boat is just 
it was just as soon as I saw it, I'm like, man, I like that boat, and I got in it. I said I like it even better. I had to change a few things to make it a bass fishing boat because they set it up for for fly fishing. But you know, they make a good boat, and it's right. solid. So, well, we look forward to talking with the Jackson kayak folks here a little bit later on today, and uh, and kayak fishing is just exploding. We uh, yep. and 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 we're we are going to develop. We are in the process of of developing a Bass University Kayak Edition. Yep, um, and we've talked to you about it a little bit. We've talked about it. Uh, we ha- we've got to we got to put that together, but we want to keep you in the loop on that. Definitely, definitely. And uh, we've got, we've got some really cool stuff coming. Um, yep. But that's all happening at Bass University. I just want to mention it to everybody, and uh, I know this is key. And I want I want I want you to take the pledge, right? Uh, the pitch it pledge. Uh, okay. We're here for Keep America Fishing. I want to t- I want everybody listening to take the pledge to pitch it, meaning. Don't put your soft plastic in the lake. Pitch them yes. in a the trash can. Get them in a recycling bin. Yep. Don't let them get into the lake. Yep. We want to protect our natural put them, resources. Put them in a pile in your boat, and so when you clean out your boat, it, yep. it's there. I mean, that's the biggest thing. I preach it. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Four ninety six films. Little, little, uh, little one and only by Fletcher. Yeah. Everybody's everybody's here at ICAST this year, <laughs> and uh, it, it's great. We're here. We're going to be live all day long talking with uh, the greatest anglers, yep. talking about the greatest products. We saw some great lucky strikes, some rattle traps, some 13 fishing products. I appreciate both of you guys being with me here today. And, uh, you know, I'm sure we're going to have a great rest of the ICAST. I wish you guys the best. Oh, yeah, man. You know, I hope uh, – I know Cliff is looking for, like, a couple, like, six-figure sponsorships yeah. to come rolling his hey, way here this money. week. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish you guys all the best. It's a lot of fun having you on the show. And we will – the Carpenter, who's coming up next? We have A.A. Ron coming to uh, talk Duo Realis. A.A. Ron. A.A. Ron. Yeah, A.A. Ron. That so he should be, be here fun. any minute. He's going to put on his so, uh, shoes. There's something I do want to talk about while we're waiting on him. Okay. Okay, I'm sponsored by Alumacraft, Alum- an aluminum boat, okay? And I just got the very first 2018 model of their Pro 185. It's actually, prior to this, it's been a dual, um, uh, dual live well, multi-species boat. Okay. And I and I and I spent two years t- trying to get them to design a boat that was specifically at the price point and and designed for tournament bass fishing, because you know we got all these kids fishing college and high school, mm-hmm. and so this boat is designed for bass fishing. It's got a high a high quality live well. It's got plenty of. I can put 25 rods in my rod locker. I can fit all my tackle down the center. All the stuff I need. It it one rated for a 115, so it goes about 46 miles an hour top speed. Okay. I got power poles on the back of mine, but you can do anything you want to with it. But the thing is, is that I, we got a lot of kids that are in that in that area where they want to fish college, but Daddy can't afford a sixty thousand dollar boat. Sure. You know, and I just want to get them into that that game, into that college game. So I'm like, come on, guys, let's build a boat that is you know thirty thirty thousand. You know, thirty thousand dollar range mm-hmm. where there's that part of the demographic that can afford that boat and get more kids out in in, in fishing college and high school. Well, so. that, that what's the boat company? It's called Alumacraft. Alumacraft. Well, I'm very yep. familiar with that brand, mm-hmm. and I think it's I think it's key because you know uh, what's happening, and we see it in the college group too. I mean, they come out of college, they've been fishing on their college team, and they can't get into a sixty thousand dollar right. Boat. Exactly. Right? You just you got a you got a sixty to one hundred thousand dollar debt hanging over yeah. your head coming out of college, right? <laughs> and the other one you got to sign on. Yeah, exactly. And you got and you got to buy a, a fifty thousand dollar truck to tow that sixty thousand dollar boat. Yep. Uh, so it, it's going to take quite a few years for for kids to be able to get into that type of product. So right. it's really great that Loomcraft is is focusing on that, and I think it's important for all of us. To, to focus on that part. I think the kayak uh, fishing oh, yeah. really grabs now, that audience, too. You know what the national champion of, K- of the KBF kayak bass fishing uh, gets this next year at Kentucky Lake? What's he get? He wins $100,000. Are you kidding? No, top prize, $100,000. Wow, that's amazing. Isn't that nuts? Yeah. Kayak, you're fishing out of a plastic boat with a $300 entry fee. Where can I get one? <laughs> you got to qualify. you got to qualify. <laughs> we had a kayak division at the Ike Celebrity uh, Tournament on the Delaware River. Uh, this year, and uh, the Hobie Kayaks was yep. sponsoring that, and the winner of that is going to the Hobie Nationals. Yeah, isn't that nuts? Yeah, it's it's really crazy how popular the kayak fishing has become. It's yep. it's exploded off the pages, 
And uh, and I like the fact that you know you're working with a company 13 that's trying to get yeah. you know affordable products into these new newcomers' hands and yep. and LumaCraft and, we want, yeah. and we don't and Jackson kayaks. I love fishing with young kids anyway, so you know more of them the better. Yeah, it's great. Well, look, my dad took me when I was four. It was the greatest gift he could have ever given me. You know, so yep. I want to you know inspire other people to to go ahead and take someone fishing. You know, talking about give them that gift. You know, talking about take a kid fishing, and I started fishing with my old man. Mm -hmm. Just 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 fun fishing. Just my daddy wasn't a tournament angler, nothing, but that line gets blurred a whole bunch when we talk about going fishing mm -hmm. you can just go fishing you yeah. don't have to fish tournaments right you right. can fun fish for brim cycling crappie what? <laughs> whatever just i don't, I don't fish fish in general <laughs> i don't fish tournaments i just fish yeah. for those of that we're gonna do a cajun interpretation <laughs> uh Sokole is uh, <laughs> crappie <laughs> crappie <laughs> calico bass crappie uh shoe pick is a grenel a grenel a mud fish. You call mud them a fish. shoe pick? No, a I haven't heard pick. that one yet. Shoe I pick. thought I knew all the terminology of it. Shoe pick. What, what else you got for us? <laughs> uh, you got a goo. A Gasper goo. Yep. What's that? That's like a drum. A drum, that's Fresh right. Freshwater drum. I remember that. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to learn the history of all those names, you know? <laughs> Where do they I, come I, from? They come from way down the bayou, 18-something, uh -huh. way back when. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would tell you this. A lot of people look at you when you – a lot of people outside of uh, Louisiana look at you funny when when, they, when you tell them that you eat shoe pick. Shoe pick is good to eat. Yeah, they are. They are. Yeah, I'm looking at you funny right now. It's no, good. they're good. <laughs> Make a, make a little boulette with them, make a little ball, <laughs> fry them up. Uh, yeah. You guys eat everything, man. You throw the whole crawfish in the pot and boil yeah, it, man. Eat it all. Yeah. <laughs> all right, That's how you get a body. That's how you get a body like this. <laughs> <laughs> eat some shoe pick yep. boiled up in a ball. Yeah, it's all right up. You got to come up. We got to get you Cajuns up here in the north and get you catching up all our snakeheads up here. Yeah, some, some guys thing. started. Every, they mm -hmm. say they're delicious. Yeah. They say they're awesome to eat. But man, we are overrun with snakeheads. They ugly. Yeah, God, they ugly. <laughs> they're uh, and they're big. They're big. They're over. They're overrunning everything. But it, it's amazing the places like the Potomac, which are polluted with uh, snakeheads. Uh, the bass fishing's never been better. Right. That's right? weird. So they're able to coincide, which is pretty exciting stuff. The yeah. deal with snakehead on the Potomac. We were there last year, and I was fishing down this. This flat with a frog, and I knew if I got a big bite, got that perfect sounding, kaboom, nice and tight, water mm. flies everywhere. I knew, I knew what's about to happen. I'm like Cliff, it's probably a snakehead, but you know I get the bite. Your heart still, you know, gets all excited. Your mind sees a six pounder. You're already counting the weight in your live well with the six pounder. You set the hook, and it's a snakehead. Snakehead. <laughs> Pisses me off. Heartbreak city. But, but you know yep. before it even happens what it is, but you're yep. still wishing. You're that's, still like, that's like drum on the Tennessee River. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I flipped into a tree one time with a jig right on the ledge. Or no, it was on a bluff wall. I set the hook, and it just right back down, and I'm like, oh, no. And it come out, and I thought I, had, I thought I had a 15-pound bass on. It was a 25-pound drum. I'm like, oh. We, we, <laughs> we, on the Great Lakes, the, dr the schools of drum get so massive that they're just, they block out your screen mm -hmm. on your sonar. Wow. And our, I fished a, a, a strand in FLW Derby up there out of uh, Cleveland, and the winning pattern was, was amazing. He was drop shotting just like the rest of us. And what he was able to determine was the difference in the in the bite from a drum to a smallmouth. And when the drum would bite, he would shake them off. Wow. And he kept shaking them off, shaking them off, shaking them off till he got the smallmouth bite, and boom. So while all the rest of us are fighting 10-pound drum on 6-pound test, and uh -huh. it takes 20 minutes. To, to find out that you're disappointed. To find out that you're disappointed. He was shaking them suckers off. That's confidence right catching there. Catching 4-pound smallmouth and winning the derby. So that's confidence. That's a that's a tip that is uh, hard to duplicate, but yep. uh, only only here at the Bass University. We have our next uh, group ready to go, Brian. Where are we at? Uh, I got a feeling Aaron was thinking 9:30 tomorrow. So 
Okay. <laughs> you know Aaron. Uh-oh. We talk fishing He's probably tomorrow, so. running. Uh, Aaron's probably <laughs> running. running down. That's yeah. what I'm going to do. And drink it, drinking his that's his uh, his fresh, what does he what does he drink all the time? My, my bad, bro. Coconut water bro, or something? Bro, I, <laughs> bro, I thought it was 950, uh, 940. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. Hey. Hey, we, we we love we love him. We he he spoke for Bash University, and um and it, it was Aaron has his own style, you know. Aaron he, has his own style. He just wanders, you know. He wanders, yep. but we he, he wanders into these amazing facts and 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 tips and strategies that are just just unbelievable. Yep. But um. But I think we're going to take a break. We're going to go try to round up Amart. We're yeah. going to let you guys go about your business and take care of what you got to do here at mm-hmm. the show. Man, I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Both you guys coming, on here. coming with me on the show today. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you, guys. <laughs> Good luck with your product. Yeah, we'll, man. Uh, we'll see you guys down the road, and we'll be right back here at Bash University TV Live 2017 ICAT.